I guess the real question is, family, friend, or foe? Who the real killer is, we don't know. But they say blood is thicker than water. But sometimes family will go against you when you least expect it. Or that best friend, who you've known since kindergarten, that say that they're your friend to the end, can turn around and stab you in the back. See, when jealousy creeps in, that's a hell of an emotion and it's powerful too. And it takes over and it consumes you and you can't control yourself. And you might actually do something that you would never ever think that you would do, but that's how jealousy works. When you allow yourself to react off that emotion in the heat of the moment, you'll do something that you'll never ever be able to change and something that you're going to always regret. Before I begin my commentary, I just want everyone to know that this is actually based on my opinion and my opinions only, not stating that anything is factual. Also, when you leave your messages down below, please be respectful to everyone in the comments. Everyone is allowed to have their own opinion. On October 5th, the alleged 17-year-old murder suspect was finally picked up, and I'm sure everyone was excited and elated that this individual was finally off the streets. But what if this individual was related to Devin? Would that possibly change the whole dynamics of the case? And also, can a 17 year old possibly pull this off alone? I don't think so. I would think that this child, the 17 year old, even if he didn't have help initially, after the act was done, I don't think the child could have pulled it off alone. What if the alleged suspect is a family member of a high-ranked official or possibly the family member of someone involved in law enforcement. Because I must say, this case, they're trying to keep everything under wraps. When I say everything, now I understand there are certain things that we cannot have access to and certain things have to be redacted because the said minor is 17. However, there are some things that we as citizens have a right to. And they have also taken that away from us. That's a constitutional right that they have actually just taken away from us. Our access has definitely been denied. I just wonder, what are they hiding? What is it that they don't want us to see? What is it that they don't want us to know anything about. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but this really has me wondering because what is it? There's also another North Carolina case that's going on right now. And I wanna say the juvenile involved in that other case is like 16 or 15, but that name was released. So here's the thing, our access has been denied. And I think that maybe if they feel like if they keep everything away from us, eventually everything will die down and it'll be like swept under the rug. But they gotta know we coming harder than that. They must realize if y'all trying to keep us from knowing everything, that's just gonna make us wanna know more. It's not gonna stop us from trying to find out. If anything, it's making us wanna know even more what's going on. So you're making it harder. So if, if y'all would just be open and release the information that we as citizens have the right to see, have the right to review, then we won't have all this. But y'all trying to stop us from finding out everything and it's just going to make us dig deeper. So y'all making it harder on yourself. And I know I'm not the only one that feel that way. Evan's mother, Tiffany Concepcion, is with us this afternoon in the Fox A studios along with our Natalie Wilson. Yes, Natalie. Chad, it is the update that so many people have been waiting on, including Devin's mother, Tiffany. Hi, how you doing? I'm doing well, Tiffany. Thank you so much. Please know I wish we were meeting under very different circumstances. <laughs> um, two weeks have gone by, no update. 
you finally get the phone call this afternoon. What was that like? It was a big relief, big pain relief from my heart. You know, it still hurts, but it was a big relief. It was like, I'm so shocked right now. I don't know if I want to cry, just be happy, or what. It's just, it's just a lot. It's, it means a lot to me. Wow. Why do you say you were shocked? Was it because the days just kept it's going just by? It's just because um, I was just in process to just go talk to my lawyer today to find out some information or do what I was going to do, whatever. And I got a phone call, and it was, did I know that the person was in custody? And it was a shock in me because it was like, I just left my lawyer, and I didn't hear nothing about nobody being in custody. So it was like, wow, like, oh, my God, are you serious? Is this real? So it was, it was a lot for me to take on right then, but I was happy at the same time. Wow, wow. And it was the sheriff himself, the Orange County Sheriff, who called you this afternoon. Mm -hmm. uh, what was that conversation like? What was he able to tell you? He was just um, asked who I, you know, who I was. I told him who I was. And he was just telling me that um, they have the 17-year-old 17 ju juvenile in custody. And I was asking questions like, well, can you tell me who it was? But, and they informed me that they couldn't tell me at this time because he's 17, he's a juvenile, and they have to, you know, process him and get everything situated to charging for the adult. Once they get all the information, they will put in, you know, breaking news with the information of who the person might be. Okay, okay. So in the meantime, is that, you talked about the relief, but is that also hard to still not know to put a it name is. or a face? It's still hard, but I'm not finished with justice yet, though. Justice is still, it's still going to be going. I'm going to still get some more answers because just because they got a person in custody don't mean that it's over and done with. It would never be over and done with. It's more to this case than what it is. So. I'm going to keep fighting to find out what's going on with this case. Okay. And now, Tiffany, when we contacted you, you told us you were in Greensboro talking to your lawyer, mm -hmm. as you said. Mm -hmm. So this was really <laughs> unexpected. Yeah, to it was. That's today. why it was so much of a shock because it was like everything just happened at all at one time. And I was in the coincidence of being up here in Greensboro. So it was like, wow. And it had been 17 days. Today, make the seventh day my child was, you know, buried. So it's like, it just all at one time is just a whole lot just processing. Wow. Now, I know you can't release much publicly in terms of what you and your attorney are working on, but in general, what is the family's focus in terms of the legal fight? What are you guys focusing on at this I time? I want it to be justice and what he needs to, or whoever, the, you know, it, it substances of who's in this case or what's going on with this case needs to be served their time. And it, it's, it's bad that two innocent teenagers was taken but really clearly no reason, no reason at all. I don't care if the suspect sit in my face at trial and tell me the reason why he killed these two innocent kids. It would never justify the time that they took these kids' lives because there's no answer for no child to lose their life the way they lost their lives. And Tiffany, I can't help but notice your T-shirt and Dennis yeah, on your mm -hmm. on your shirt there. And I asked you, I said, well, do you do that when you're meeting no, with No, it was, I just put it on today just to put it on. So it was just a coincidence. Like I said, I just put it on today and just going to see my attorney. And I got all this calls. So it was like, I don't know if it was a sign, but I know he's at peace now. But he's not, to me, I'm not all the way in peace until everything is solved the way it's supposed to be solved. And, you know, all the pieces is put together and I'm told what, was was going on with this case. Okay, so still some uncertainty. There's still some unanswers that I need to be answered. I see. And I want justice for both, Devin and Lyric. They both are, it's not all about my child, you know, our child, not my, just my child, because he do have a father. It's about our child, but at the end of the day, it's about someone else's child too. And I want justice for both, because neither one of them deserve to get killed or die the way that they did. And I know both families are processing yes, things in their own way. Yes. Have you been able to communicate? No, with I child? tried to reach out, but they didn't ever want to reach out to me. You know, when I was doing the um, balloon reliefs and the ride along and stuff, I tried to um, put them in the activities to, you know, try to bind the family, but it was no answer return back. So I just left it the way it was. Okay. But I will always, you know, do justice for Lyric too, because as you see, Devin and Lyric had to be some kind of friends. So at the end of the day, if she was his friend, she was a good person. So there's no reason why I should not, you know, show justice for both. They both are children. They both, you know, are, they, they shouldn't have been taken like this. Yeah. And Tiffany, before I let you go, I do want to end on something positive. I want to talk about the community support. What has that outpouring been like? How has that helped you? I had you a family? whole lot of help from the community. From my, I'm from Caswell County, and um, my kids, my son's family is from 
Alamance County. And we had help from both counties really, really well. Caswell County helped me very well with my, and they still support it, and they still um, going to be there behind me 100. Alamance going to be there behind me 100. It's just, they have the support, and I am um, planning on doing a march. So I will be marching. I don't know what day, it'll be sometime this weekend or sometime. I will be marching, I will be talking, you know, protesting, because we still need justice. Just because they got a 17-year-old juvenile don't mean this case is done, because it's have more answers to be answered. And they will get answers some way or one way or the other. Okay, Tiffany, thank you so much for stopping by. Yeah. Again, we certainly wish, we didn't have to meet like this, but we will certainly keep you updated on anything we learn in this case. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. I think it's kind of sad that Tiffany had to go get her own attorney because that's the only way she can get information. And I am happy to hear that Ominous County in her county that she resides in, they're being very supportive. And I think that's amazing. But Orange County, Orange County is really playing shady, y'all. They, they're shady and they're trying to cover up something, but we're going to find out. And I hope they know that. But I have a little snippet from Gerald's um, video. And catch him, he's Gerald Jackson with the North Carolina Beat. He's very knowledgeable. Go check him out on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And it's just a small snippet from his video. And this is just the surface, you guys. When I tell you this case is deep, I wasn't ready for this. I honestly wasn't. And it's just a lot to take in. But this is just a small snippet from his video. And he is chewing gum, but it's just a small snippet. So just sit back and listen. Quick update on what we have learned today involving the case of 14-year-old uh, Lyric Woods and 18-year-old Devin Clark. Um, I am very disappointed that uh, the district attorney um, in Orange County is violating North Carolina's public records law now, I'm going to tell y'all something. Listen, so on Wednesday, okay, just to let you guys know, on Wednesday, um, I, I, the North Carolina Beat was the first media publication to get the 911 call in this case, okay? And we released it to the public or what have you. And I'm sure other media did the same um, after we released either got it from us or, you know, put in their own four year requests. Um, there was other information uh, that was released to the media uh, that we did not request or that we did not seek, such as the police reports or what have you. Um, I sent the four year request and the story is going to follow behind this. I sent the four year request on Wednesday uh, after just a little after uh, the close of business on last week, and um, I got the 911 call, which was disguised to protect the person's natural voice. Okay, we got that back around 10 o'clock um, Thursday morning. Okay, so it wasn't even a full 24 hours when we got that back. Okay, we got that back fast. As all get out. Okay. There have been rumors and there has been a police report that was circulating and it listed that Lyric Woods was a runaway juvenile, possibly suicidal at the time. Okay. And police have stated that she and her friend Devin Clark um, was gunned down they were murdered okay um well after that report surfaced me being an investigative blogger and wanted to learn more information just to keep the public informed we found another so basically in a nutshell they had a little slip up because initially when the case you know, when the case first hit the news, I guess they didn't have all their decks in a row. I guess maybe they didn't even know what they were dealing with. But initially, when Gerald was trying to get 
the recordings from the ATV rider when they found the body and all of that information. Accidentally, a police report slipped up in the information that was sent to him. And when he seen the police report, he was looking for the phone call that went with the police report. And when he tried to get it from Mr. Metlin, Mr. Metlin told him that he would give him a call back and he hadn't heard from him like in a couple of days. So he got back in touch with him and that's when he was told that the DA went to the judge and had everything barred. Now, on the police report, it states that Lyric Isabella Woods, age 14, she had suicidal tendencies and she ran away with Devin Woods. That was um that was the information that's on the police report. But the phone call that went with the police report, they don't want us to know about that. And it's like, what was on that initial phone call that y'all don't want us to know about? Because in all the other information that came out, not one time did they say anything about her running away with Devin. Okay, with, it, it was like, oh, she ran away. No one said that she was with Devin initially. And no one said that she was suicidal. Now, I do know that Lyric allegedly did have issues with her stepdad, and I do believe that she was punished from her phone. So that's why she didn't have her phone with her. So I know they had that type of issue going on, but why would, why did he say that she was suicidal? So what was really going on at home? You know, that was in the first police report. So what was really going on? Because in nothing else, did you hear anything about her possibly being suicidal and her being, you know, run away with Devin. And we didn't hear that. We just heard that she was missing. And then later on, we found out possibly with Devin. But in that first police report, it mentioned Devin and it mentioned her being suicidal immediately. But like I said, that information right there was not supposed to go out. So like when that when um Gerald tried to get the rest of the information, like I said, he was shut down. He also tried to get the dispatch information as well. And also the crime scene um tape. Cause you know, like when they're on the scene, they do have to record while they're on the scene. Like they do have to redact all the important information, but they do have to record what's going on at the crime scene. And that is public records. But they sealed that. I guess he said, you know what? We slipped up already. We don't slipped up and sent out the wrong thing. So now we just going to shut everything down so we don't have no more slip ups. And that's exactly what they did. But it's just not making sense because what is it that they're trying to hide? Like, it just does not make sense. It doesn't make sense. And I don't know, whatever it is that they're trying to hide is very detrimental to this case. And it's something very serious. Cause I mean, they going, they jump in hoops and hurdles to hide this stuff from us, breaking all kind of constitutional rights just to keep us out of the know. But we gonna find out though, we will, one way or the other, we gonna find out. <laughs>